Hi guys, welcome to Savvy Man Show, me, your host Sean. I apologise for any background noise, we are outside. Uh, it is also windy, so it is unavoidable. Uh, un unavoidable. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment in the box below and subscribe if you aren't already. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you'll be alerted when a new video gets uploaded. Now we go on to the first part of the day. I mentioned before how uh, institutions look like they're selling and I think they're going to start selling. Well, it's been confirmed they're selling. And that's why despite retailers buying, uh, stocks are still going down. We've seen it with all the major ones, but they're buying gold, oil and safety stocks. That's why when we were buying SBSW under four dollars to bring a DCA down, now nah, we can trim some of it at five dollars. I'm, I'm still holding it because I still think it's a good company, but it means I can allocate some of that cash elsewhere. What else am I doing? If you followed me on X or Twitter or in my free Discord, you would know that I alerted everyone to the fact that 23 and Me was going to be taken private. And we bought some of it, had a 14% run up and sold. Now, I didn't get in the bottom obviously because I only made 14% and some people made 40% but they are people who got in before the news came out but 14% was good enough for me uh, let me know did you get in on it or did you miss out snowflake nah this is one that I've avoided for a long term, long time since it's an IPO. I always thought it was overvalued. Yes, it looked to me like a great growth stock, and but it was overvalued, and then it's had a few bumps in the road where its growth was stalled. Seems to be back on track, and you can see here. It's, it's down by its lows. It's, it's one that I've wanted to pick up, but the valuation has just never been there. It's still not a good value, in my opinion, but I think it has come down to what I consider a good enough valuation to get in start a position the price to sales is under 20 I never get into anything where the price to sales is under over 20 that's usually you when I start selling <coughs> and the market cap although above enterprise value I will forgive that for such a high quality software firm and a forward PE if they hit their metrics, it will show they will become profitable in it this year. But this is going to be a long term play. And as I said, I, I'm only having a starter position in this. RX, RX. They only need one of their uh, programs for it to be successful. And it is down massively. I, I like their tech, the price to sales is extremely high for me and this is the one where I make <coughs> sorry, the exception over the price to sales but because of the price to sales I'm keep it, I keep my position small. Now, If you want to, 
Sorry about that, I've got a bit of a cold. If you want to find out more about these kind of stocks, uh, ask me questions, and I like to try my best to answer them. Well, there's plenty of people on Twitter who know a lot more about them than me. And we're heading to Antelia. We're now at a price point I originally bought it at before I sold out of it at 30. Now, I never thought I would get a chance to pick it up at this again. And I'm, if it comes down anymore, I'll be buying calls. But uh, I think go back, do your research, you'll see how good this company is. The risk is it's cash burn, it needs to manage its cash burn. And you'll find that it's an amazing company, it's a first gen CRISPR company, and of course, Beam. I call this the the Google of genetic engineering, which is a bit unrealistic because Google has a genetic company in its little ETF, but mainly because it has so many programs and so many high quality partnerships that I never thought this would come down to 25, let alone down to under 24. I'm scooping both Entelia and Beam up as fast as I can selling other profit companies where I'm profitable on to be able to afford them. Now, I'm, I've now made them back to 5% of my portfolio and I'm considering whether to make increase that to 10% and reduce other positions or not. I have, I have my biotech portfolio, I have my long-term portfolio, they're 5% of each of them but I also have my spec portfolio they're five percent of them and then I will I'm thinking about whether to increase in percentages because they are right now I'm overexposed to them but I think they warrant that exposure at this price a bit like when Google was at 80 dollars a share and Amazon was as well now one way I'm funding it is Sega if you remember we got in when it was uh, 450 a share and I said that they the World Health Organization was funding trials in other countries with Sega's uh, medicines and also, uh, there was a lot of uh, Sega medicine related diseases coming out. Well, I could have just sold out my initial investment and kept half shares, which usually I would do, but with the other companies, the likes of Beam and and tell ya, selling off, I'm putting this money to work there. I, I, I'm s still holding my small position in Watches of Switzerland, WOSG. Uh, as you know, I sold out when it had a 5% run up, and then it came back down. And for those of you who asked me, I bought back in when it came back down. So, basically, that 5% I made on it, basically my profit, I put back in. So, I'll lose nothing if it goes to zero, which I doubt it will. Let me know what you guys think. And thank you for everyone who bought me a coffee. Link's in the description. And of course, I can't say it. I can't talk about biotech in my portfolio without speaking about CRISPR. 
at $55 a share, you know, when you consider it hit 90, I didn't sell at 90, I sold at 85. But when you consider I bought it at 35, I, loaded, I was telling people to load the boat at 35. <laughs> and that was before it got approval. And that was before all the good news that we've had since then come out. It's, it's looking pretty good, tasty here. Now, remember, this is not financial advice, these are my opinions. I do think CRISPR is going to be a generational stock to come. And I am making CRISPR, Beam, and Intellia. Sorry about that. Core parts of my portfolio. Uh, as I said, I had to sell out of them to prove my funds, but and I'm grateful to have a chance to get back in. Out now, the way. I'm. Uh, I would like your guys' opinion. Uh, Prime, in my opinion, I was in. It ran up. I sold out. I could get back in but I'm waiting for data it was purely a spec play I'm I'm not so convinced I like what I've seen but the fact that Big Pharma is not touching it with a barge pole tells me that there's red flags going off there if, if they have good data and Big Pharma gets in then I'll get back in. I made enough from it to get back in at a higher level. If if they don't have good data, that means it will drop like a stone. That's my opinion. I was asked about it if I was picking it up here and. I'm not even pulling up the chart because of it. DNA, I've done videos on them. It's, it's what I call an all-style, no substance thing. They look good, they look amazing. Uh, they're coming out with all these partnerships. The problem with them is all their partnerships are companies they are acquisitions, so there's nothing coming of it. They, they are giving the money with one hand and taking it back with another. So I think it's just manipulating. Again, if something comes of it, I will reevaluate. But that is why, in my opinion, it's going down. The people have had enough. I would, I would have loved for something to have come of it. I hold three sh shares, which is a minute position, and not even worth talking about. But if my big free biotech, which is crisp and telia and beam, go down any further, I will cut it loose. And I'll see you in the next video. That's all for now.